Alrighty, welcome everybody. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Julie Brown. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome. We're going to have so much fun tonight. We are playing with a Halloween suite and so I hope uh, most of you like Halloween and I hope you will enjoy these cards. But just always remember any layout that I show you, you can do with any stamp set that you have in your home. I am going to take care of some housekeeping really quick and then we are going to get going because I have kind of a complicated one. Um, it's not really hard, it just takes a lot of steps for the last card. So let's get this out of the way. Hey, Shanine. Okay, so our September hostess code is um, KJKD9EAR. Hey, Susie. <laughs> um, you can order through me at juliebrown.stampinup.net. And then there's my email, my Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. The only one that's a little bit different is my YouTube channel. You have to put my name, Julie Brown, and then a dot, and then Julie's Creative Stamping. And then always check out my blog because I have a lot of really cool articles on that as well. So let's get moving. Um, actually, before I get completely started, I do want to announce, I don't think I have it sitting here. Mm. I thought I had it sitting here, but coming up November 9th, hey Cindy, um, coming up November 9th, I am doing um, an online class and I am pairing up with Elizabeth Mayfield Hart from Arkansas and Bonnie Sanchez from Canada. And so it's going to kind of be an all day thing, but you can do it online. It's going to be recorded on a Facebook group. Uh, the fee is $55, and you will get everything that you need to make five cards, a mini album, and a two-page layout. No worries if you don't scrapbook and you don't uh, want to do a two-page layout. Just uh, check with me, and I will show you how to convert that into cards if that's what you would prefer. So, But we are doing a two-page layout for the live. Um, that is November 9th, and you need to RSVP to me if that's something that you think you would be interested in doing. Um, I will put those links in the bottom for uh, that event so that you guys can see that uh, once I upload this to YouTube. So let's get going. Whoops. All righty. So this is the bundle that we're using and um, it is called Bag of Bones and I am in love with this thing. Uh, guys, this has, let me count them. 31 dies with this set. It is unbelievable. It is the cutest little set. Uh, and then, of course, it has the stamp set. It also is part of a suite. And there's the suite number. The suite is called Them Bones. And that comes with designer series paper. Uh, it also comes with some glow-in-the-dark embellishments and paper. But right now, Stampin' Up! They have sold out of that because it was so popular. And it is due to come back in um, at the first couple weeks of October. So be watching for that if you're interested. But everything else that you're seeing tonight, I'm not using the uh, glow-in-the-dark uh, tonight because it's not available right now. But everything else right now is available. As far as I know, you know, it changes on a consistent basis. Okay, we are doing three cards tonight. The first one is going to be a simple stamping card. Then we're going to do a casual card. And then we're doing the Avid card, which is going to be a shadow box card. So you wait for that one. You guys are going to love it. All righty, so let's bring in what I'm going to be using for my simple stamping. Sorry, I'm trying to grab all everything that I need to do this. <laughs> so I'm going to need all of this. I'm going to need pumpkin pie, starry sky, gorgeous grape, and granny apple green are all the colors I'm fixing to use for this one. And just remember, simple stamping is basically just we're using cardstock, we're using ink, and we're using the stamps. Oh my gosh. I have a fly here, but I have my fly swatter, so if you guys hear a big pop, don't panic. <laughs> it means I got him. All right. You guys know what happened the last time I had a fly down here. It drove me absolutely crazy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to push this on there, put a little bit of pressure, and then I'm just going to stamp this kind of in the center. And that's going to, this is the starry sky. 
So that's, we're starting out with that one. And I don't think I need that color anymore. Let me get my chamois, because I will have to clean this between each color. Thwack that thing. I know, I know. Seriously. Seems like lately every time I do a video, uh, there's, I, I, I haven't seen a fly all day long, and then poof, here comes a fly. All right, so then we're just gonna take this one, and we're not gonna stamp him all the way on the page. Oops, okay, made a mistake, so we're gonna turn that over, start over, sorry. I, the funny thing is, is I was doing a video today about inking up things, and I was trying to get one to do what that one just did, and I couldn't get it to do it. It's so funny that it just did that. All right, so this one's gonna go here, a little bit of pressure. We're gonna clean that off. You guys may not have even seen it, but okay, so just, I don't wanna get a lot of ink on that. Little bit of pressure. There we go. Now I didn't push it quite quite enough to get a as good of a image as I wanted, but it'll work. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with um, granny apple green. And we're going to bring this one in up here, like so. Oh my goodness, that is not getting a good image. Let me see if I can go over the top of that. That's one of the nice things about these polymer stamps is if you don't get it inked up. There we go. Fixed it. Alrighty. If Anyway, if you don't get a good image, you can actually go right back over, which I think I may go ahead and do that on this um, gorgeous grape, the face on this one too, because I wasn't happy with that either. So let me see if I can stay in the picture not get my head in the screen and get the ink. Oh, it was the other side. Oh, I hear the fly, it's coming in. There we go, okay, that's better. Alrighty, and then we're gonna come in with some pumpkin pie ink. I'm gonna close some of these inks so I don't end up getting my hand in it because I'm pretty bad at doing that. All right, and then I wanna come in with some pumpkin pie, and we're gonna do this one twice. Just because, you know, it's Halloween, and we need pumpkin pie. All right, so this one I wanna bring in this way, and this one is going to be kind of the same way, but up here a little bit more. All righty. So there is all of our skeletons. Aren't they super cute? Oh, thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> thank you, Shanine. Yes, I, um, I always get nervous trying to stamp over the image when I'm on screen because I can't get my head like, or maybe my head was in the screen. I don't know. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Um, but thank you. Uh, usually you, if you're at home, you can kind of take your time when you're doing that, but when you're trying to do a video, that doesn't work out. So now I'm coming in with these cute little bats, and basically, when I'm kind of doing this where I'm kind of creating a background, what I like to do is just kind of fill in the white space. So I'm just kind of going through, and I'm just kind of filling in the white space. And you'll see I go on, I go off, and then it does have another little bat, so we're gonna put both of these bats on here. And again, like I said, it's all about just kind of filling in white space where you think um, these bats would be. And I do like to kind of go off the page in some places, so like up here, um, up in this corner, and I think that looks, actually, I think I wanna put one more kinda of coming in over here. All right, so that's kinda of how quick you can get a fun little background made with just the stamps. 
Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to stamp the sentiment onto a piece of basic white. And you guys know that I always tell you, um, if you have graph paper, it's great, but anything that has a line, if you line this up before you stamp, then the chances of you getting your um, sentiment stamped straight is gonna be really good. All right, oops, that's coming off. Let me push that back on there. I've been using this a lot today. All right, there's that dang fly. Oh, it landed. But I'm about to stamp, so I can't stop and get it. Oh, this is killing me, guys. All right, so there's the, it says, no bones about it, you're a sweet friend, which I think is super cute. Let me clean this one off. I can, I can already feel it every time I have something in my hand and I'm stamping is when that fly is gonna show up. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my stamp and seal plus, and I'm just going to add this to another strip that's a little bit bigger. I think this one is, I think I did this one maybe seven eighths and this other, the bigger one is, um, sorry, I got some, some, I think the bigger one is like three quarters or maybe even, or I guess it would be an inch if this is seven eighths. So I'm just going to butt this up, make it flush to this edge over here, centering top and bottom, and then just run that down like so. Okay, then what I wanna do is I kinda want this to be a little off kilter. So I wanna put this kind of sideways um, where I can still see my center skeleton, but I, I don't want this to be like straight on. So we're gonna do this a little cattywankus is my word of the day. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna put that on so that it, um, and it's gonna go off the edge. I made this, um, I think it was like a little, like a quarter of an inch bigger than what, uh, this four inches then we're just gonna simply turn this over and remember I stamped earlier and didn't like my stamping so that's real that's always a a good reminder to all of us is we always have two sides to stamp on so if you mess it up like I did then you can just turn it over and re-stamp all right so that's gonna go like so and then we're gonna bring in our starry night um, card base and again this is simple stamping it's ink it stamps and it's cardstock we're not doing anything else that's like super fancy I'm gonna turn that over because I've got that ink on that side or not the ink but I've got the glue on that side I should have put a silicone mat down I'm sure that's what Susie's saying right now to me right <laughs> Oh, is Skylar on? <laughs> All right, so there's that. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna come in with um, this, oh, that one's got some stuff on it. So we're gonna come in with another four by five and a quarter. And we're gonna come back in with our starry, starry sky. I always say starry night. Have I been saying starry night? It's starry, starry sky. Me and this color do not jive together because I always say the wrong color. So we're just gonna come in with that little skeleton, like so. Then we're gonna come back in with a couple of the bats just to make it look fun. Because stamping is supposed to be fun, right? We wanna just kinda... And you guys can see, I really don't have any rhyme or reason for how I do things. And that's how you should be when you're stamping. It's about letting your creativity take over and uh, and develop what looks good to you. Because it's about you and it's about what you like when you're making your cards. Okay, so then I'm gonna come in with, this is part, one of the sentiments from this stamp. It's Happy Halloween. Ooh, I've gotta, don't, re don't let me forget to clean my skeleton off. And again, I'm gonna line this up straight first before I stamp the sentiment. 
right? Then we're going to stamp that sentiment like so. I'm going a little fast, guys, just because, um, <laughs> just, just because uh, I'm trying to get to this last shadow box card that is so super fun, and I really want to show it to you guys. So, And you guys know I try to stay at, at an hour, so we're going to be pushing it tonight. We may go a little bit over, but we will see. All right, and then we're just going to stick this on the inside. And this just goes to show you, even though, yes, I have all the fun tools, I have all the die cuts, I have all of that, what a super cute card you can make with just ink, cardstock, and stamps. What do you guys think? No bones about it. You're a sweet friend. And then happy Halloween. Yes, no, do we like it? Okay, card one done. All right, so now let's move on to card two. Now, card two is what we call... Um, a casual card and the main difference between casual cards and simple stamping is now I'm going to be bringing in some designer series paper and um, and I, I'm going to bring in a die not not one of these dies but a die cut so normally we're like adding ribbon we're adding embellishments um, and we're adding designer series paper just to give it a little um oh I'm so glad you guys like that card yay Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is our stamping, and I'm going to get that out of the way for both the inside and the front. So I'm going to end up cutting a circle out of this, so I have to be careful with where I place um, my skeleton for this. And so I know that I'm going to kind of, I want the skeleton kind of more towards the right, so I'm going to try to center it. And then I'm going to bring in this fun little, like, hat. <laughs> Callie calls it an old lady hat, my granddaughter. I'm not going there. <laughs> but there's my hat. And then I'm going to bring in the little flower that's part of this set. I think I need to re-ink my black memento because it's not playing well today. And we're just going to put that flower in the skeleton's hand. All right. And then let's see what I'm going to do on the inside. Okay, so on the inside of this one, we're still going to put Happy Halloween. So let me get that one done. And then I'm going to clean all these before I do the die cutting. Again, sorry I'm going fast, but I really want you guys to see this last card. All right, so this needs to say Happy Halloween. And then I'm going to come in with those little flowers and I'm going to put those in this bottom corner down here like so. And that's basically going to be the inside of our card. Okay. Do I have everything stamped? <gasps> yes. Okay. So let me clean these really super fit fast. And for those of you that don't, don't know, the, this is our um, chamois. And all you do is, um, this is just water in here. It comes, see this really pretty purple? When you first get it, it's so pretty, it's so purple, and then you use it. <laughs> and you get all of the different colors of inks on it, but you basically just have to wipe that clean, and then I, I'll go up later tonight and I'll rinse this out, and then it's ready to use again. So, super cool little tool that Stampin' Up! came out with a while ago, and I love it. Okay. So I need to die cut this out. And so what I'm going to be using for this, these are uh, new dies that came out in our mini catalog. They're the deckled circle dies. And man, is there a lot of them. Now, I know I say this every time I do one of these, but I'm just trying to get everybody used to the way that I do it. So I number my dies starting with number one as the smallest and then all the way out. I put little labels on them so that if you ever see instructions from me, um, and it says use the number eight die, then you guys just know you're going to count from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now you can see I put a little, I got to get my hand behind it. I put a little label on there that says number eight, 
just so that I know, so that when I'm making them, um, I can, uh, I know which one I used. Okay, so let me get my big die cut machine. We're gonna bring be bringing this one in and out quite a bit tonight. I did a lot of the die cutting for the last card because um, you'll see what I did. Okay, so I told you that I kind of wanted this to be more to the right. And um, we're just gonna put this on here. And we're gonna run this through. And this does, this does kind of a, it's kind of a torn edge. It's hard to explain like what this image actually, or this die really does. Uh, because I think if I were to try to tear a circle, obviously I couldn't tear it as nice as this does. But look at the fun little edge that this puts on it. I don't know if you guys can see. Isn't that fun? All right, so that was the number eight deckled circle dies. Those are, those are new in the mini catalog. All righty. So now we're kind of ready to put this card together. Oh, I do need to state one thing. Um, so I did this ahead of time because I used uh, embossing, and what that is is we uh, put what's called a Versamark, which is kind of like a clear sticky, um, is what we stamp this with. Then we put white powder, embossing powder over the top, and then I heat it up with a heat tool. And so that's how I got this onto the black. All right. Oh, yay, Cindy, I'm glad that you like that. It's, yeah, it's a it's a fun little, and those just came out, and there's so many of them. Okay, so this is some of the designer series paper. This is kind of the checked or plaid side, and then this other side, which I'm going to be using as well, has these fun little um, tombstones on them. Super cute. I think that's probably the hardest thing when we're, when we get our designer series paper, because they have, um, patterns on both sides sometimes it's hard to decide which side am I going to use all right oh I didn't want to do that yet so now I will be bringing well maybe I'll be bringing in my silicone mat if I have one sitting here okay because I put the glue on the back of that I'm going to bring the silicone mat in because I wasn't ready to put this on the card front yet I got a little ahead of myself so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere this and I'm gonna put it about a 16th of an inch from the right and top edges. And I'm just gonna use our um, liquid glue for this. And you guys can see, I don't put a ton of glue on this. This is, I, I say this all the time, this is not the glue that you grew up with using in school. This stuff is really um, good gives you about you know 10 15 seconds to kind of jiggle things around but once it takes hold it holds really good so you don't need a ton of glue and another reason that you don't want to put a ton on there is when you're pushing this down you don't want glue coming out all the sides so always keep that in mind when you're adding glue so now I'm going to use the other side so I will be putting adhesive on the opposite side this time and it, like I did, see, mine came off the edge there, so you can always fold that back if you do that. You guys are getting all sorts of tips because I'm, like, kind of a hot mess tonight. All right, so this is going to go down just like that. And you'll see why I didn't want to put this on the card base right now. So then what I want to do is I want to bring this down here about a half an inch up. And the nice thing about when you have plaid paper, see this line right here? I can actually line up the bottom of this with that and make sure I get this on here straight. So big plus. And again, I'm just gonna use my um, stamp and seal plus. And I'm just gonna line that up so that that is straight across there. Now I usually cut my pieces a little bit longer than what I need 
because I would rather it be longer than shorter. And this one looks like it's like a perfect fit. But now what I'm gonna do is just turn it over and I can see on this one right edge, you guys might not be able to see it, but there is a little sliver of black showing on this edge. Okay, so now you can see why I didn't want to put this on the card front because I wouldn't have been able to cut that off. So that was why I needed to, um, even though I had already put the adhesive on, I needed to bring that in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to put this on the card front. I love my little old skeleton lady. I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking her. She's looking pretty cool. Oh my gosh, did I just lose my... I do that all the time. I have all my stuff sitting here. Oh, I knocked it on the ground. Okay, this is also um, some new ribbon. It, it's not part of this set, um, and I forget which set it goes to, but it is in the mini catalog, but I wanted to use it because I just thought it, you know, looked good with this set. So now I'm gonna bring in some mini glue dots, and I've already, I obviously I've already tied the bow, and I'm gonna use my take your pick tool for those of you that do any kind of crafting, this is the best tool that you can own. Oh, looks like one of the red hat ladies. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, the white glossy embossed cinnamon does look good on these colors. I agree, Shanine. Okay, so I'm putting two glue dots. Now, the reason I do this is because... I'm going to kind of mess with my bow a little bit because I don't, you know, if you want your bow to go down, you can do that. But when you put two glue dots there, it allows you to not only grab the bow, but these little legs so that they will go the direction that you want them to go. So that's why I always put two little glue dots down. Then we are just going to go snip there and snip here. And then I found some embellishments um, because of, because the glow in the dark ghost and the paper was out. I wanted to find some embellishments that went with this. And guys, look what I found. You guys may not even know this. Um, these are in our annual catalog. They're called the Adhesive Back Sparkle Gems. And look, it's all the same colors as this. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I was like, score! Because I don't, I don't like to show you guys stuff that's out of stock and that you can't get. But sometimes that ends up happening because, believe it or not, I will be sitting here designing and all of a sudden someone is like, oh my gosh, you can't buy, you know, this is out. Because what happens with our mini catalogs is uh, it's only here for a short amount of time and um, because a lot of people are like holiday they're doing Christmas cards and all that kind of fun stuff they uh, this stuff tends to go out of stock right away but then it usually comes back but right now it's some of this is out all right and then let's put this inside in so I don't know if you notice on that stamp set not only does it have the skeletons but it has a little dog skeleton and a little cat skeleton as well super cute so this is going to go on the inside. Sorry, I've got... And, whoops. Boy, I didn't get that straight. Alright, so that's going to go down like that. And then, guys, card number two is done. So... The difference between this one and the first one was the first one I used just ink, just stamps, just cardstock. This one I brought in designer series paper, some embellishments. We did some heat embossing. We have a bow. We used some die cuts. So what do you guys think? Super cute. Do you guys like my lady? <laughs> so it says no bones about it. You're a sweet friend. Happy Halloween. Pretty much same sentiments as I did on the first one. Okay, are we ready for the shadow box card? I know I am. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little excited about this card? Just a bit. Alrighty. So let me bring in all of my pieces for this. 
Now I did most of the stamping ahead of time in the die cutting, but I am gonna show you what I did so that you guys understand. So what I'm doing is this stamp set, let me explain the stamp set. It has all these dies, and if you'll notice, it has like a skeleton and all the body parts. And so um, I wanted to do the skeleton with all the body parts, and um, but I was like, I didn't want to stamp each of those things individually. That was going to like make me crazy, right? Um, sorry, I'm trying to find something right now. I forgot to get something out before I started, so give me one hot second. Oops, and now I'm going to throw stuff. Ah, okay, that's fine. I can't find the one I was looking for, so I'll use the one I used first. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> So anyway, it's got all these body parts, all the body parts here. Well, I didn't want to stamp each one individually. So let me show you what I did is I load, and I'm going to put, where's that silicone mat? Just so you guys can see. So I put all of these on here. Um, this is our eye block. And so I just put all of the little body parts with, along with the dog on here. So then I was able to stamp, and I did it in black, but I'm going to show you. So then I was able to stamp it like so, and all everything's there. So then all I had to do was die cut these pieces out. Um, but it, I only had to stamp once, once I stuck them all on here. So that's just kind of a tip when you're if you're going to do what we're doing tonight, which is building a skeleton, um, and you need all these body parts, then just put them all on a large block like this and stamp once, and then you've got it. Okay, so, and then you'll see, here's all my pieces and parts. I have one big skeleton. I have all the body parts are all in here. So, what we're going to do is we are going to first build a skeleton. Now, I was, I used our, um, our brads. Stampin' Up! has these round and square brads, which did work fine, except they're super long, and I ended up having to snip the ends of them. And so now I'm going to have to, sorry, <laughs> bear with me while I get, because I'm going to need four of these. So I want the little round black ones. And I do have a little um, like crimping tool that, was, that allowed me to um, snip off the ends of these. But ideally... Um, and that's what I was looking for. I used to have a bunch of like little itty bitty brads, which I still do, but I don't have any black ones. So I'm going to go back to this one. Now I brought in my piercing mat for this. And so here's my piercing mat. And what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in um, a body. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see if I can hold it up. Can you see that when this cuts it out, do you see those little dots by the shoulders and kind of by the hip section where like your legs would go? So it automatically, when you die cut it out, it puts those little dots um, right there. And then I'm going to need some pieces here. So bear with me while I get all of my pieces. We're gonna be using the dog, but I don't have to build him. And so I've got all these pieces. Let me get them all out here. I'm not going to be using all of them, um, but I went ahead and cut, I stamped and cut them all. And then I'll put these in a little um, bag, the pieces I don't use so that I have them and don't have to cut them out. So let's see what I want to do here. Okay, I think I want this arm that goes down like this. And then I want this arm that's going to go up here. I want this leg that's going to go down here, and I want this leg like that. So these three pieces I'm not going to need. Okay, so what I did was I came in, and where those holes are, let me get you guys a little bit closer if I can. Okay, so what I did is there's also little dots on the end of this. I took my, my um, Take Your Pick tool and I just went in and I made those a little bit bigger to make it a little bit easier for these brads to go through. So I'm just poking those holes. Okay, 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna first connect everything and then I'll show you how I trimmed it all because these are just way too long um, for what I'm doing. Now, if I was putting this on a, on a card front where I was poking through, like, let's say, let's say I was going to put it on this and I was just going to poke it through here and build it onto this, these work perfect. But what I'm doing is I'm kind of building a skeleton that's going to kind of be, you'll, you'll see when I get the card put together. Okay, so we're just pushing that all the way through. And see, look, his arms move. <laughs> Are you guys as excited as I am about that? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. He moves. Anyway, I know I'm a little nuts, but it makes me happy. Moving skeletons make me happy. Anyone else as excited as I am about the movable parts? Okay, again leg moves. <laughs> uh, I think I'm having too much fun. All right. So again, we're just sticking these brads through. And if I was doing this, like, again, if I was doing this and I was putting it on a piece of cardstock, I would have poked everything through like onto this mat and then you can pull it all up. Um, and it's a lot easier, but because I'm building and I want him, um, he's not going to be on a piece of cardstock. He's going to kind of be floating. And you'll see what I mean in a second. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! Cindy, I'm glad you like him. That's because, yeah. Cindy's one of my really good friends, and so we're kind of alike. So it doesn't surprise me that she's as excited about the moving parts as I am. <laughs> All right, so let's put this through. And put this through. And then normally what I would do is I would turn these over and I'll show you the burping process in a minute. We call it burping. But because these are too long for what I want, I have this cool little tool. Um, I have no, I, I think I bought it at Home Depot, not Home Depot. Um, I actually think I got these at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go as close as I can. And I'm just going to crimp those. And it just takes those long legs off. Then I am going to um, use my take your pick tool and open this. If you guys have never worked with brads before. I might have crimped them together. Okay, so then I'm going to open these legs and I'm going to fold them open. Now I'm going to, I may have to do some more crimping in just a second, but that's just kind of, um, that's the, the first step. So I'm going to crimp and those went flying. I, maybe I should have safety glasses on. Mental note, guys, you might want to save safety glasses for this part of it. Sorry, I'm trying to get in there with my take your pick tool. I don't know, maybe my nails will work better. Oh gosh. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Got it open. And we're just going to fold those down, fold them open. And then, so I'm just, so I sh probably should have built part of this ahead of time. I never know what's going to take a long time and what's not, but um, but maybe this is a good process for you guys to see. I just wish the this take your pick tool would. Now it does have a a, a tinier end, which probably is what I should have had on here. So um, the take your pick tool just got some new pieces and parts that come with it, and um, one of them is a smaller straight edge like this one. I call it a pokey tool, um, but it is a little bit thinner, and so that might have worked better. Okay, so now I'm going to move this, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of move this around and see, like, what shows on the front when I move him. And I am kind of pushing these open a little bit, and I'm going to burp them in just a second. But do you see how when I move this arm up here, 
I can, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little piece that's sticking out right there. So again, I'm just gonna kind of crimp that. And then what I'm gonna do, this is what we call burping. You bring in your bone folder and you burp it. And that pushes it down. And it still moves, but it kind of pushes it and keeps those legs in place. So now this one, I need to kind of move these legs. Now, if I move the arm, does anything show? I'm not seeing anything. So again, this one's ready for me to burp. Isn't that funny how we call it burping? I don't know. For those of you that are probably saying, why would you call that burping? I have no idea. I didn't come up with the phrase. <laughs> Okay, and I can see a little bit of this edge right here. And so I'm gonna crimp that. Oops, I didn't get the whole thing. So I'm gonna crimp that piece. And then we're gonna kind of turn it so that it's kind of, uh, what I'm trying to do is turn this so that this leg goes into the body. And then we're gonna burp that one. So it doesn't move. Now this one I definitely, I can, I can tell without looking at the front that I left way too long a legs on this one. So we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna crimp that piece. And then we're gonna pull this one up and crimp this piece. All right. But I am gonna kind of move this, these legs and make sure I don't see any, nope, I don't see any of those, the, pieces from the brad so we're good all righty so now i can still move the legs <laughs> isn't he cute okay so that's for that part <laughs> shanine you're too funny okay working on the skeleton makes you want to go buy some of those red wax wax lips yes i remember those <laughs> that is too funny Okay, so now let's kind of get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, stamp the inside of this to get this out of the way. I'm not doing anything special with this one. I'm um, actually, yes I am, I lied. If I have it over here, hold on. Um, Cause I decided. Oh no. I'm actually not going to do the inside <laughs> because I want to make this a happy birthday card for my daughter-in-law because her birthday is, is on October 31st. So instead of putting happy Halloween, I'm going to put happy birthday up here. But I'm going to go ahead and do, I'll do this. Actually, I won't do any of the inside. I'll show you the one I made earlier that says happy Halloween and you'll get to see how it works. Okay, so now we're going to work on... Um, our, this is actually not our card base. Our card base is going to be a basic black card base. This is actually the front of the card, but I'm going to go ahead. So this is some of that designer series paper. Look how cute this is. Isn't that cute? And so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this onto the card front because we're, we're actually gonna build a shadow box on the front of this card. All right. So I'm gonna put this down, because this is gonna be kind of the inside of the shadow box. Isn't that cute paper? Super cute. And then I have already scored on each end of this um, uh, front shadow box I have already scored at a half an inch or I guess a half an inch and an inch on both ends so now what I'm going to do is I am going to fold and burnish these um, and then we're going to do some die cutting and then we're going to do uh, we're going to run this through an embossing folder as well so I'm going to just fold these and we're going to do that on this end as well and there will be a PDF for this um, attached to the, um, once I load it up to YouTube. So you guys will be able to get the PDF with all of the dimensions and everything. Okay, so now it looks like this, but I'm gonna flatten that back out to run through the die cut machine. So this time, 
um, I'm bringing in, so, so like we have the deckled circles, this is in our annual catalog. These are the deckled rectangle dies. And I am using number six on this one. And so I'm gonna kind of set this up so that I get it centered. And I'm gonna bring in some of my, um, uh, some of this post-it note. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, I get this off of Amazon. It's called post-it note and it's just, it's like tape, but it, it's, it's not super, super sticky. It's like post-it note sticky, and so it allows me to like uh, secure things like this in place without tearing things up. So I'm just gonna put that there and there. Then we're gonna bring in that big die cut machine. One of these days, I'm gonna get everything set up so that I don't have to keep bringing this in and out. I'm actually gonna get it set up so that my camera is over where it sits all the time. All right, so we're gonna do this and we're gonna run this through and we're gonna cut a frame out of the middle of this. And then the cool thing is, is when you do this, you're also gonna end up with a piece that you can use. Now you guys heard a lot of cracking, crackle, crack, snapple, and crack, snapple, and popping. That's normal, so don't <laughs> freak out when you hear that. So this is what I did. Now I'm gonna remove this. And I, this is the part I'm gonna use, but I've also now got myself a cool little piece like this that I can use on another card. And this is kind of what we do. Remember how I'm always telling you guys that if you're using, so let's say I'm using this as a frame and I'm gonna bring in another piece and put on top of this, but because I just need this outline. This is what I'm always telling you guys to do. Cut, you take a die cut and cut out the center and then if you're putting like designer series paper over the top of it, you, you can't see that you've cut something out of it and then it saves you some paper. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is this same piece, I am gonna run it through the, this is a new um, embossing folder. These are our embossing folders. And so now I'm gonna run this through the embossing folder. Now I'm also, you guys have never seen me do this, but I'm also gonna tape this in place because it's really important that this die cut, um, you, know, uh, you know, up to these lines. And so I'm actually gonna try to get this lined up the best that I can, get it straight, and then what I just do with those pieces of paper. Oh, <laughs> they're right here. And then I'm going to just barely put this on because what happens when you emboss paper is you break the fibers down and then they're not quite as strong so you have a better chance of ripping when you take this tape off. So we're gonna close this shut. We're gonna bring in, so for, for 3D, 3D embossing folders, we use the number one plate and then the number four plate. I took off all of the other plates, it's just these two. You can bend them and mess them up if you don't use the right combination. And always make sure too, that you're putting this folded side right here, that goes in first. All right, so let me get that out of the way. Let me get this out of the way. And for those of you, those are our die cut machines. They're super cool, work really good. So now let me show you what this did. So I've gotta be really careful pulling this off because it pushed it down into the paper. That's why I tried not to tape it real, like put a big amount of tape down there. Okay, so now see what that did? It put that fun embossing around that edge. Yay! Okay, now because of what I just told you, <laughs> um, and that is that when you emboss, it breaks down the fibers and it can make it can make the paper a little more flimsy than you want it to be. Okay. 
So now what I'm going to do is decide which side I want up, and I think it's this one, so I'll have to do my folds a little different. Where's my... I'm trying to find where I burnished it. I think it was that one. Okay. And that was one of the reasons I burnished it first, so that that line was there. But... I like this side better on the embossing and so I'm gonna just make this fold backwards from what I had it a second ago so let me but that's why it was important to burnish those edges before <laughs> I embossed it because uh, if you don't if you score it and then you don't burnish it before you emboss it it's not gonna fold where you want it to fold because the embossing kind of messes that up. Okay, so like I said, you can see like this is a lot flimsier now, and so I want to do some, um, I want to give this some reinforcement. So I brought in some window sheets, which is this clear stuff here, and I'm going to bring in some tear and tape, and I'm just going to run this tear and tape down this edge. And then I'm going to put one of these on the bottom edge and one on the top edge. Um, and all of all this is doing is reinforcing and making this strong. That's all this is doing. Okay. And so just always keep that in mind when you're cutting frames like this and then embossing them that sometimes it can break those fibers down so that it's a little more flimsy or floppy than you want it to be. And all you need to do is, um, these are our window sheets, and you just get some of this window sheet and you just cut it to the size that you need to do that reinforcing. Hopefully you guys are learning some stuff tonight too besides just watching a fun card be made, okay? So see how much more steady that is now? It's not going to bend. <gasps> Yay. Okay. So then we're also going to take another of those window sheets because uh, we're going to do some fun stuff with this one. And so what I'm going to do is just put some tear and tape on the end of each of these. Oops. <laughs> that was one of those pieces from that Brad. Oh, shoot. Okay. That's not going to tear off the way I want it to. Let me use my nails. Okay. Then we're going to just put a little piece on this edge. Again, I always kind of burnish them really quick just to make sure that when I tip take this top piece off, it will come up without pulling up the other side that's sticky. So this piece, I want this to go about a half an inch above this opening right here. Now, as I'm making this card, I want you guys to think of all the other sets that you have that you can do this shadow box thing with. Okay, does that look about even? Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this in and we're actually going to adhere this to the front of this card. Now you can do this two ways. You can put um, liquid glue, which is if I were home, if I were not doing this on a video, that's what I would do is the liquid glue because it gives me some wiggle room. I'm going to use tear and tape just so it stays in place while I continue to build this card. But again, we want to burnish these edges. All right. And then I'm going to turn it over. Like I said, if I were if I were just doing this and it was just me and I wasn't doing it on a video um, and I had time to let the liquid glue dry a little bit where I could like set something on top of this card and let it dry, I would do the liquid glue because it's a little bit easier with placement. Um, because the liquid glue gives you some wiggle room and I'm not gonna get any wiggle room. I'm gonna have to put this down right the first time. Ugh. 
pressure. Okay. I think what I may do is do one side and then do the other side because I'm feeling the pressure. All right, so I'm going to use my take your pick tool to lift that off. And then I'm going to fold this down and then just put that right along that fold edge there. Okay. And now I'm going to pull on, open this up, get this side. And it's really important if you're using tear and tape that you bit, you fold this piece together and you fold, most importantly, that you hold this side down and together um, and then just kind of see what I'm doing. I'm kind of like just moving my hands kind of to the right to get that in place on that side. All right. So that's kind of my shadow box. See how that and then you'll be able to open it up as well. But so now let's build on this shadow box and show you how fun this is. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece on first. I didn't do it before I put it on here um, just because uh, I wasn't sure if everything would fold correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some liquid glue kind of up in this area, kind of in this corner. And I'm gonna take this little boo. It says boo to you. And I'm just gonna place it in that corner. And I'm just gonna kinda leave that alone for a little bit and let that dry. And then I'll turn it over and trim it. But while that's drying, I know it doesn't look really fun yet. I am gonna bring in my little skeleton and I'm gonna bring in um, all of these fun little pieces that I'm gonna be putting on him. So this one is gonna be wearing the top hat. So I'm gonna bring that in and we're gonna put the little top hat on him. And you guys see, I don't use a ton of glue, <laughs> just a little. So now I'm gonna put his little top hat on. And then um, when you cut out this pole, oh shoot. Um, there it is. When you cut out this post or this cane or whatever you would call it for this little dancing guy, um, it comes with this little itty bitty bow tie. Let me, I'm probably going to have to get you guys a little closer again so that you can see all this stuff. And so I'm just going to put one quick little dot right there of glue. And then I'm going to pick up that bow tie. And I'm just going to lay that down. You know what? Let me show you an easier way to do this. I'm actually going to use the putty end of my take your pick tool. There's a putty end on this one. Let me turn it so the putty comes out. Then it'll pick that up. Super easy. And that was way easier for me to stick that in place. Okay, and then what I want to do with this. <gasps> oh, no. I dropped it. Okay, so what I want to do with this is I want part of it to go behind his hand here. So I'm going to put a little glue right there. And we're going to put this, because I want to, I want to kind of make it look like he's holding it. So I'm going to place this behind like so. And then this piece can stick to his body right there. And it really doesn't need to. It's, it's going to stay where, where it is. So there's that piece. So now we're going to add him. Now remember, I have that window sheet right here, right? And so I'm going to kind of figure out where I want him to be. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to cut myself um, a really thin strip of this tear and tape. So it can't be very long because what I'm looking at, and I know you guys can't see this, but this is my window sheet is only this wide. So this tear and tape can go from here to about right below his second rib without it um, going over and sticking to the back of the shadow box. Does that make sense? 
So I'm just gonna cut me a piece about that long and then I'm gonna turn it, sorry, and then I'm gonna like cut this in half because I want a really thin strip. Now that piece um, I can stick on my silicone mat and I can use that later because it'll stay sticky. And then I'm gonna turn him over and remember I told you it's gotta go from this bottom section here. But the reason I cut that thin was because this middle section of him is, is this little section right here is super thin. And so I, I needed that so that it would go up there without showing in the front. So now I'm just gonna pull this backing off like so. And then he's going to be able to sit and be glued down to this window sheet. And then what I do is I just kind of anchor him just so um, it makes me feel better about he's not going anywhere. So I'm going to put just a little bit of glue behind his hand. Hold that down for a hot second. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here on his foot. And hold that down for a hot second. And same thing with this foot. And I'm being really gentle not to bend this too much. Um, I just want to get a little bit of glue to help secure that in place. All right, so then we've got our little skeleton dog. Super cute! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bring this out just a little bit so that I can stay in the frame. There we go. And there was another die cut that I did, which is also another little tiny bow, and I wanted to kind of put that on our little dog here. So there was the bow that cut out with that like dancing cane, and then there's this bow that I wanted to put on the dog. And so for the dog, I want him to kind of be like right here. And so this front part right here, I had to kind of look and see where I can put glue, right? Because his whole head is gonna be on the um, window sheet, but the hind part of him is gonna be on the frame. So a lot of this just has to do with paying attention to where you can put your glue because you don't want it, I know you guys can't really see that window sheet, but you don't want glue anywhere that's not touching the window sheet. You want you know, the glue to all be touching the window sheet. Okay, so there's our little dog. Now what I wanted to do with this skeleton that I cut out is first I wanna put this fedora hat on this guy. Cause it's cute. Ah. We're almost done, guys. Hang with, hang with me. Okay, but now what I want to do is I actually want to cut this guy in half. So I'm going to cut. He's attached to his hand right there, and he's attached right here. And I want to open this with my snips right there. And I'm actually going to kind of bring him in as if he's kind of coming in from the side to say hello up here. And so I need to put glue on his body right here and on the back of his hand right there. Those are the only two places I want glue. And then we're just gonna hold that for just a hot second. And so we've got our, this little skeleton coming up there. Now for the legs, I'm gonna have those hanging out on the top up here. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue right there and his legs are just gonna be kind of hanging out up here. And I am gonna push that down just to hold that in place. And then some of the other dies that I cut out are these little bats. I mean, guys, 31 die cuts with this set, 31. <laughs> I mean, this was like crazy how many dies and so again I'm just putting a little bit of glue 
Don't drop the bat. And then I'm going to stick this bat here. And then I'm going to take these other two bats and put one on each side. So this one's going to kind of go there. And then this other one is going to go over here. So this is definitely, this is why we call this an Avid card because it takes a little bit more time to put this together because it has so many different layers. Okay, so now I'm ready to do this because I've let it set. So now I can just turn this over. Sorry, I had that on a do not disturb, so I don't know why that call came through. I do apologize. All right, so basically I'm just gonna trim that end right there. And then I'm gonna turn this over and trim this end like so. So that that's at an angle as well up here. Now, if you find like this piece, see how this end was not, I didn't get any glue down here. So now I can just kind of go under a little bit, put a little bit of glue and push that down and then give that some time. And so that's all there is to making this shadow box, guys. So there it is. So it will fold down really nice to go into a card. And then when they take it out, it all of that pops up. How fun is this card? And then let me show you the one I did earlier because there's here's the here's the front and there's the inside. So it's still a card, right? But it's going to pop up and I can't I can, but it will set, and I don't know if you guys can see, it will sit up just like this, um, and they, it'll be something that they can put as a decoration in their house. So do we like it? Do we like our shadow box? So let me bring in all the cards that I did tonight. So we've got this one, this one. All right, so here are the three cards that we did with this set. I did not use any of the glow-in-the-dark paper, um, but I do want to bring in, if I can find it really quick, I did design a card the other day with this set. See, every time I think I know where stuff is. Um, and this was using the Rustic Crate, for those of you that saw that one. So this is just another version. Now, all of this is glow-in-the-dark paper. And this is a little crate that I have it all in. So when the lights go out, and let me see if I can get it to be a little dark and see if you can see kind of. No, it really doesn't show you. <laughs> um, but this does glow in the dark. And it's really cool when it, when it lights up and glows in the dark. So one of these times, I did take a picture of it with my phone. You know what? Let me see if I can pull it up on my phone so you guys can see it. Because I do want you to see it because it's super cool when it's, um... oh yeah, there we go. Can you guys see that? That's what it looks like, uh, the glow in the dark when it turns night. That's that same card and that's that glow in the dark paper. How fun, right? Okie dokie. So that is all I have for you tonight. Again, guys, if you want to do my online class that is coming up, um, the Berry Merry Christmas Suite, five Christmas cards, two, a two-page layout, and a mini album that you can give to somebody else, please let me know. You do have to RSVP with me um, as soon as possible. The cost is $55, and I will. if you don't live here, I'm going to ship you everything you need to make what we're making, and you will get to follow us. Um, we will be live kind of like I am tonight, but we will be going much slower because <laughs> we know you guys will be following us. And so if that's something that you're interested in, please reach out to me. I will put all of the, um, uh, for those of you that are on watching me on Facebook, you can just respond and make a comment that, yes, you're interested, and then I will get with you afterwards. If you're watching this on YouTube as a replay, I will have a link that you can, um, with probably with just my email on it, where you can RSVP if that's something that you want to do. And so the cutoff date for that so that we get everybody their stuff, because we're going to be doing that November 9th, which is a Thursday, but it's all going to be recorded. It's going to be in a Facebook group. So if you can't make it starting at 9 o'clock on Thursday morning, you can watch it at your leisure and make everything that you need to make.
um, for that. So um, that's going to be, it's, this is one of the first times that I'm collaborating with two other people, one from Canada and one from Arkansas. And so it'll be tons of fun. And so hopefully that'll be something that you guys join us um, and we'll have fun. Uh, so anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. I appreciate all that you guys do to take time to be here. It's so much more fun when I can sit and look at all of these uh uh, comments that you guys make and so and again if you are watching this on YouTube it's a replay but you can still type in comments if you have any questions also if you want the PDFs for anything that I've done tonight you will have to find me on YouTube which is Julie Brown dot Julie's creative stamping um, find this video and the the PDFs will be attached to it so you can download it and make these cards yourself so anyway I hope you guys liked my movable skeleton and I hope you liked my shadow box and all the other cards that I did tonight. Again, guys, thank you so much. And I went 11 minutes over. Not bad. So everybody have a good night. I appreciate your time. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.